Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where it's been over a month since I've touched this game uh, due to a variety of situations uh, including uh, two instances of bed bugs um, and the holidays. So uh, I am hopefully in the last room I will be in in this hotel um, and as you can imagine me having to move around and stuff has made it difficult to sit down and record anything. Um, also, I go through various phases of being very self-conscious that people can hear me through the walls. So, I am going to be as quiet as possible. <laughs> I am going to even move the mic closer to me. Um, and yes, so I apologize for the delay videos. This will actually be going up today. So hello in the present if you see this on today. <laughs> so uh, what day? The 30th of January 2022. So hello. Um, what do I want? What do I want? I don't use Shockwave much. I don't use anything except Charge very much, honestly, which is not great. Maybe I should... Yeah, I need to do that for the Paragon and Renegade. I've spent a little too long doing these shenanigans. Need to boost up this one. Yep. Perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so much Renegade. Oh, jeez. I know I need to do Zaid's mission really soon. I hope it's not too late. Uh, but I don't think I have it. I don't, I, oh no, I do have it. I do have it. Uh, but first off, I am delaying unintentionally, but I am going to go talk with Thane as soon as I talk with Morden. I don't think Morden will say anything. Shepard, how can I help? Good. Have you got a minute to talk? Having trouble working between your interruptions <laughs> and Edie's insistence that insane experiments endanger entire crew. Hard to concentrate. Affecting morale. Anything else? <laughs> I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need me. Onwards and upwards. <laughs> I'm just trying to be friendly. Okay, let's go talk to Joker, too. And then we'll talk to Kelly, and then we'll go talk to Fane. Who I am... I have been... I'm seriously a bit... Like, I've been kind of waiting for the chance to just, like, chill. And, like, have the time to, like, really just jump into the game now that Fane's here. So, that's one of the delays, is I don't want to just, like, do it willy-nilly, you know? Upgrades are messing with our inertial skew. Compensating. Oh, another dangerous alien aboard, Commander. <laughs> Thanks. Why can't you collect coins or commemorative plates or something? <laughs> I assume everything's going well up here? Quiet enough. I... What the... Trouble? Trouble. No, it's nothing. I... Son of a... Very funny, Edie. Real original. Stop it. You did insist on manual control, Mr. Moreau. Oh, boy. Uh... That's it for now. See you, Commander. Have fun. Edie's playing jokes on him. She's evolving. And Joker's not, you know, rage quitting about it. Why? Look at that. Like, her head is, like, turned to the side. It's so weird. Like, Commander, you received a new message at your private it's so terminal. so weird. I don't know what to feel about Grunt. My psych reports were for Oak here. We have no guarantees that Grunt is mentally stable. I get the feeling he just doesn't care about anything, including who lives or dies. Is there anything I should know? <laughs> you have unread messages at your private terminal. Jack would like to see you down in the oh. body hole on the engineering okay. deck. Okay. Anything else, Commander? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. Mm, no. Okay, we're good. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Hang on, let's see. How may no. I help you, Commander? I wasn't all. sure if she I'll would have something to say about Thane. Um, the Alliance soldier here gave you this contact information. He said they're trying to stop the collectors. Uh, do you know where they are? I know you're looking, but so many people are just gone. Every family lost someone. The children are the worst. Please, the Alliance isn't doing anything. The Council isn't doing anything. Cool, cool. The Alliance soldier here. Thank you. Thank you, Caden for freaking giving me sad messages, making me feel guilty. Uh, oh, oh, hey, speak of the devil. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it's Caden. <laughs> so, Shepard, I'm sorry for what I said back on Horizon. I spent two years pulling myself together, back together after you went down with the Normandy. It took me a long time to get over my guilt for surviving and move on. I'd finally let my friends talk me into going out for drinks with a doctor in the Citadel. Nothing serious, but trying to let myself have a life again, you know? And I saw you and everything pulled hard to port. You were standing in front of me, but you were with Cerberus. I guess I really don't know who either of us is anymore. Do you even remember that night before Ilos? That night meant everything to me. Maybe it meant as much as to you. But a lot has changed in the last two years, and I can't just put that aside. But please be careful. I've watched too many close to me people close to me die on Eden Prime, on Burmire, on Horizon, on Normandy. I couldn't bear it if I lost you again. If you're still the woman I remember, I know you'll find a way to stop these collector attacks. But Cerberus is too dangerous to be trusted. Watch yourself. When things have settled down a little, maybe, I don't know, just take it. Okay, let's just be really conflicted uh, about Caden, and now I'm gonna go... Okay, hang on. Okay, that was my conflicted moment about Caden, and now I'm gonna go to the <laughs> No, for reals. Shepard is, you know, this is a, it's, it's a tough for her too, but you have to head cannon it. It doesn't really show up in the game too much, you know, which is fine. Like, the game gives you the option of, you know, to head cannon it, which is nice. This is where Thane lives. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> he gets a nice view. He is, has one of the best views, I think, actually, of the heart of the ship. Do you need something? Oh my gosh. <laughs> have a few minutes to talk? Certainly. We haven't had a chance since I joined. When we met you, you said you were dying. Let's just get this. Yes. I thought you'd want to know Let's more. just be sad. You don't have to worry about the rest of the crew. My illness is not communicable, even to other Drell. It's called Kepril Syndrome. Is there anything we can do here? Normandy has a state-of-the-art medical bay. No, thank you. It's being attended to. If the finest medical minds in the Hammer Illuminated Primacy can't solve the problem, I doubt your ship's medic could. Thank you for your concern. Trust me, this won't affect my performance. He just can't breathe. <laughs> do you need something? I gotta see. Have a few minutes to talk? Later. I'd like to consider what we've already discussed. What we've already discussed is his mortality, so that's cool, that's fine. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Uh... The Drell live on the Hanar homeworld, don't they? Yes. I know many think the Hanar are difficult to understand. It's just that they're very formal with those they don't know. We know them quite well. If you ever get close enough to a Hanar that they tell you their soul name, you would find them warm. I thought that Hanar only let very close friends know their soul name. Most of my commissions were for Hanar. I grew close to my regular contacts. Soul names tend to be poetic. A Hanar known for its cynicism might take a name that means illuminates the folly of the dancers. Hanar talk using bioluminescence. That's more of an obstacle than their politeness. True. Many Drell have had their eyes genetically modified to perceive their higher frequency flashes. I had the treatment. I can't tell the difference between a dark red and black, but I can see ultraviolet light as a silver color. That's dope. Legit. The whole the Drell Hanar relationship is is very interesting. And I to this day don't know how I See, it's been a long time. When you pray for the wicked, who exactly are you praying to? That depends on the circumstance. To find my target, I speak with Emonkira, Lord of Hunters. When I act to defend another, Arashu, goddess of motherhood and protection. And when I have taken my target, I speak with Kalahira, goddess of oceans and the afterlife. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is, I'm actually, like, this is bringing up a lot of memories from when I I don't know when you play Mass Effect 3 with Thane's story specifically I don't know it's just it's bringing back a lot of heartache I guess I'm actually tearing up a little this is oh my gosh I didn't know that Drell had many gods it's one of our older beliefs many embrace the Hanar and Kindlers now or the Asari philosophies the old ways are dying there are so many ways to interpret one's place in the universe. Who needs the wisdom of our ancestors? 
The younger generations don't believe they can help us fathom genetic engineering, orbital strikes, or alien races. It's such a, like, I get it, right? Like, it's such a complicated issue that they, like, distill down into such a small conversation. But, like, and it's very personal in a lot of ways for a lot of different people. But, like, I, a part of me is, like, you know, sad at the loss of, like, culture and, like, religion. Like, the, there's so much culture tied up into religion, you know? And, like, there's just so many different ways to interpret like he said there's so many different ways to interpret the world now but like then like like who needs the wisdom of your ancestors but like I mean, I'm an archaeologist right like I want progress and like I'm a scientist like you know I want progress I want you know things to change for the better but like I also greatly respect and value history and like not just like the physical like representations of history but like the learning the knowledge like the you know you can get too bound up in traditions and stuff like that like for sure but like there's nothing to me anyway that says you can't take like belief systems of the past on with you into the future because our past informs our future right like it's so cliche i know but like I think religion's a little bit more adaptable than people might realize, <laughs> at least in here, right? Like, and it's like, it's, I don't know, I'm not, okay, I'm not gonna get into, like, the whole thing. This could be a really interesting discussion, is what I guess I'll, I'll boil it down to, that I can't really, I mean, it could do one-sided, but that would, so I'm just not going to do it <laughs> right now, even though I desperately want to. Oceans and afterlife don't seem to have much in common. Consider. The ocean is full of life, yet it is not life as you and I know it. To survive there, we must release our hold on land, accept a new way to live. So it is with the death. The soul must accept its departure from the body. If it can't, it will be lost. <laughs> the belief system of the drill is just really beautiful. And I know I am biased, but like I really like it. Also, I think it's one of the only like dives into like a religious discussion between companions that you get into Samara also well you get into Samara's like personal philosophy as a Justicar but you don't really learn about like the Asari philosophies but like I mean you can if you read like the codex a little bit but there's so much like culture like it's like one of the drill are also homeless essentially right like they're living with the Hanar I mean, we'll find that out later, technically, but I know that right now. But, like, there's so much, like, I'm kind of going back, I guess, a little bit, but, like, there's so much culture and, like, sense of being that is tied into place, which is, like, one of the reasons that, like, the, what is, like, the, um, dispersal of, like, Native American tribes was such a blow because like there's so much story like there's so there is religion there's like stories there's language tied into like your own your your environment like your like the areas that you live in like and it's less so now no not not less so now but like it's less so for many people who don't see that the same way like they see themselves maybe in like a broader view and less like a very like local environment view and like it's the times are shifting right like you can't you can't just cling to the past and be like oh you know it was better back in the, it, it's all it's all muddle right like there was good things in the past but there's good things now there's bad things in the past there's bad things now but the, the issues can kind of stay the same they can change i don't know anyway um i have many thoughts on this subject apparently <laughs> but um yeah it doesn't it doesn't help with i think the drill like belief systems and like sense of sense of drellness, you know what I mean? Like your sense of being a drell that they don't even have a home planet anymore. It's gone. Um, which is one of the reasons I don't really like what the Hanar have done to them. But we'll see that later. We need to have the best equipment possible to take <laughs> on the collectors. You have any leads I could chase down? My old contact network often located rare equipment for me. Would you like me to get in touch with them? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one. Also, it's so funny. We're talking about, like, religion and stuff. And then it's, she's like, hey, upgrades. <laughs> Let's see what they've got. What do you got? I don't know. 
not that. No, no, no. Weapon upgrade? No. Oh, I sure hope I edit that out. Uh, advanced mineral scanner. Oh. Sure. I don't know if that's what he gave me, but <laughs> that's what I've got. Do you need something? Oh, that voice. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. We need to have the best equipment possible. My old contact network yeah. located where equipment. Let's see what they've got. Is it? It wasn't that. Was it? Oh. I mean, I'll do that. I don't think. I have. I can't. I don't, I don't remember. I'm a bad Mass Effect player. I don't remember what each play. I know Grunt gives you the Krogan shotgun. Uh, I think it's. Oh my gosh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, anyway, Garrus gives you the gun, the real gun or whatever it is. Um, oh my gosh, his name slips. He's on the second floor. He gives you the armor. Um, gosh, <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, maybe it was the modular. Yeah, maybe it was the modular probe. Really, that was the one he would give me. Interesting. Anyway, that's my true love. But right now, Shepard's not in the mindset. I know I cheated. So the way Shepard probably would have normally gotten the squad mates right is she would get Tally first. Um, and then you know whoever else, but she would go get Tally first. Um, which I feel bad because personally now. My favorite, my favorite squad to bring out is, or at least it was in the past, uh, Samara and Thane. And also, we're freaking in, we're on Ilium, and there's so many quests here on Ilium to do. I haven't even done that yet. I have, we have the Shadow Broker DLC. Because like, on the normal game without the Shadow Broker DLC, you could do this system hacking and help her, and then she's like, okay, bye, and you're like, okay, bye. But with the Shadow Broker DLC, it actually like continues on. You can help Liara further. Jack has a personal matter she wishes to discuss. Oh, boy. Hey, Shepard. Liara tissoni has got quite a reputation. I've done business with her people She's before. only been doing this for two years. Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. Emphasis on the evil. I just... The food's gotten better lately, though. I guess his reputation will take time to heal. <laughs> good, good. I just, um... I don't know how she's done what she's done in two years. <laughs> Ooh, his family has been taken. Um... Let's go chat with Garrus. I haven't had a meal that good in a long time. I didn't think Rupert had it in him. Shepard, need me for some calibrations. Have you got a minute? Oh my! Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. <laughs> it's annoying even when you're not romancing him. No, Randy, it ain't for good on all that. Talk to you later, Garrus. I'll be here if you need me. Thanks, buddy. Best bud. I romanced him on my renegade placer. That was fun. Which I never finished, but, you know, still. I think we still have Miranda's sec personal mission, so... If we have time, yeah. I'd like to go to Ilium and relocate my sister's family. If we have time, ha <laughs> I'll let you know, Miranda. Of course, Commander. Okay. Like we don't have all the time in the world. Um, actually, speaking of... Jacob. It was Jacob who gives you the armor. I knew it was a J, and I was going Jake, and I was like, no, that's not right. Jack would like to talk with you. Yeah, I know, I know. Just making sure, just making the rounds. I hope we can clear up what's going on with the girls mm -hmm, back, Commander. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doubt my father's alive after all this time. Mm. Was there anything else? Just eager to get going. Mm. 
Okay. We'll talk later. I'm pretty sure when they have their personal missions that they don't really talk about anything else. Like, when you haven't done their personal missions yet, they just, that's all they say, is they repeat that. I... Kasumi, Miranda, Garris. Oh, God, I need to feed. I need to feed my fish. You can go two missions without feeding your fish, but if you do the third mission, you're screwed. Look at my collection. Oh dang, the Caden picture's still up. When does I think that only goes down when you start romancing somebody else? Okay. I thought it went down after the horizon thing. <laughs> also, this is the bathroom, which you cannot enter, but you can enter it in Oh, there it is! Okay, I was like, you can't get in here. But you can get in here, um, also, in Mass Effect 3, when it's changed. Uh, but look, I have all this shelving that I don't do anything with. I have a toilet, and I have this, this shower thing. Hang on, I'm trying to... Get, okay, it fits. Perfect. And I think in Mass Effect 3, if you walk in to the shower, um, you, you can actually take a shower. You can actually get wet. Um, and I'm pretty sure you have a hot tub in there. If I I've only played Mass Effect 3 once, but I'm pretty sure you have a hot tub in your bathroom. <laughs> oh boy. What kind of armor do I have right now? See, I like... Also, um... Do I want... Do I want... Sure. You know what, let's, let's pull out the hoodie. I think we've, we've got enough time. I don't know. I really like these armors, but they have helmets, and I don't... having my face, you know, I like, ooh, we did get this, melee damage, weapon damage, shield strength, uh -huh. that's an interesting looking one, it's not boob armor, that's nice, health, let's actually, let's try that one. Kestrel. Oh, I could have the whole. I think I have the whole Kestrel set. The melee damage thing, though, is like I don't really care. Oh ho ho! Oh my gosh! I might actually have to run in and bop people. Well, I have. I have like a thirty percent melee damage increase right now. That could help my charge thing if I run in and then just melee people. I like this set too. It looks nice. Oh, this suit is nice. Okay. Mm, I might go with it. Let's see, do we have the Kestrel helmet? No, but this one matches pretty well. But I'm not wearing a helmet. Yeah, I don't want to wear a helmet. Oh, but that does look cool. Nope, no helmet. Oh, I hope I did that correctly. Grunt Zaid first. How's it going, boy? Shepard. Just checking in. Making sure you're acclimatizing. Uh, humans talk too much. Like the tank. Come back later. Hey, our armors will match. Anything in your tank imprints that can make you Nothing use else them? I can think of. I'm no tech. Enjoy what okay. you've got. That means we did we did his. That's all for now. Shepard. I'm pretty sure that their responses to like the, the three options that are like the two or three options that stick around don't change. Thinking about past missions. Got a minute. You might learn something. Mm-hmm. One time we were trying to clear out this gun nest outside a base on Vatar. Nothing we did even made a dent in that thing. 
Someone had the bright idea to kidnap a local girl, strap grenades on her, and make her go seduce the guy in the bunker. What? Terrible thing, I tell you. Well, she went up there, knocked on the door, and nothing. Grenades never went off. But the guy stopped shooting, and we snuck by. Never found out what happened. Okay. Okay. You smoke, Shepard? Don't. That stuff will kill you. You're a kid once. Weapons dealer. Probably half your age. Fifteen? Bastard smoked too close to a cache of explosives. Tossed a butt, blew himself sky high. Yeah, well, that'll certainly kill you, and that's just Darwinism at its finest. I should let you go. Talk more later. Why smoke seven. next to explosives at all? Why be in the vicinity that you can throw a butt that's close to <laughs> explosives? So, Kenan, did you know we've got a crazy woman squatting down in the sub deck? What? If she touches anything, I'll kill her. Oh, and the only thing she wears from her waist up is tattoos. <laughs> oh. Maybe I should go down and welcome her aboard. And she's a murderer. Has biotic powers that could crush you with a blink. Hates everyone in service. <laughs> Damn it, girl. Stop toying with me. <laughs> Maybe I should go down and welcome her aboard. I got thoughts like little bugs crawling in and out of my head. I can't stop them. You know I have a history with Cerberus. You know how far back it goes? I'll listen to anything you have to say, Jack. Your pal, the elusive man? Never seen him before, but Cerberus raised me. First thing I remember is my cell door in a Cerberus base. They did experiments, drugged me, tortured me. Whatever chance I had to be normal, they stole it by trying to turn me into some super biotic. The doctors, the other kids, every one of them hated me. They let me suffer. What did they hope to gain by torturing a little girl? It was something about pain breaking down mental barriers and how it might clear the way for a more biotic power. I'm sure there was a payoff due at some point, but I wasn't going to see it. I was wired up in a cell. They tortured you just to see if they could make a strong biotic? That's it? Wasn't in a position to ask, Shepard. All I know is... A little girl crying in a cell, begging for the pain to stop. Yeah, there's a... She's done that thing where, like, trauma victims will do sometimes, at least a little bit, where, like, she kind of disassociates from her... Sorry, that means it's time for my laundry. Um, but she's, like, disassociated, essentially. Like, at least in some ways. Like, she calls... She doesn't say, I was a little girl. She's like, all she remembers is, like, a little girl, you know? Um... So... You love the power they gave you. They never gave me a choice. How did you get out of there? There was some kind of emergency and I made a break for it. The other kids came out of their cells and attacked me. So did the guards. I just killed everything in my way and ran. Guess my biotics had developed faster than they thought. I managed to get a shuttle off the ground. Drifted until a freighter picked me up. The crew used me, then sold me. That's my uplifting escape story. Yeah, she's, uh, it's not a, she didn't give, like, maybe things could have been different if she'd been rescued by decent people, but she wasn't, by any stretch of the imagination. There were other children in the base? I didn't know much about them. I was kept separate. They hated me just like everyone else there. When I broke out, I had to fight through them all. I showed them, but there's a loose end I need to deal with. You're absolutely certain that Cerberus was running the facility? I was a kid, but I wasn't dumb. I know how to listen. It was Cerberus. Don't care how far down the chain it was. They thought they were so clever. Turns out, mess with someone's head enough and you can turn a scared kid into an all-powerful bitch. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Oh, she is. I'm going to talk to the elusive man and he'd better have some answers. He'll just deny everything. That's not what I'm after anyway. I found the coordinates in your files. I want to go to the Telton facility on Pragya, where they tortured and drugged me. I want to go to the center of the place, my cell. I want to deploy a big fucking bomb, and I want to watch from orbit when it goes. Attacking our allies is going to derail our mission. Not a smart move. The files say it was shut down after my escape. It's been abandoned for years. 
They going to care if I blow up a garbage dump? Fair. You've lived with this your whole life. Why do this now? Like I said, I found the coordinates in your files. You can't expect me to just sit on information like that. No, it's like, why, why now? It's like, well, because now she has the freaking information that she needs. I'll set a course for Pragya. I owe you, Shepard. She's mean to you if you're nice to her, but it, it, it does, I think it, I don't know, I'm kind of torn sometimes if I should, like, be gruff with her or if I should be more Paragon, but I tend to, I don't know, there are moments where it's good to be, you know what I mean? It's just like real life. I mean, like, sometimes it's good to be blunt or, like, gruff or, like, uh, I don't know. But then it's also sometimes good to, like, you know, even if somebody's angry at you and throws your kindness back at you, like, it's still good to be nice, you know? So, anyway, I'm going to call this episode here. Um, thank you all so much for watching. And before I forget, I want to say thank you to my patrons. Um, to all my patrons, but specifically to my sapling tier patron, Ree Scalito. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my tree tier patron, Christopher, who is the bestest. And I really appreciate you. So thank you all so much for your support, everybody. And I hope to see you in the next one.